breaking it down, building it up. Well, so far, 2020 has been the year of deconstruction, triggered by the media-fueled panic over the pandemic. It was amazing to me how fast most people were willing to lock down their lives, cowering behind face masks without first stepping back and making some mindful observations about their own situations. With the CDC drastically revising down corona fatalities as we speak, this starkly reveals a teaching moment for all of us about money and power and how common sense got lost amid the cortisol fight and flight from Hollywood movie type scenarios that were both falsely reported and exaggerated. The event has shown us what we wanted to believe overrode empirical facts to fit our narratives of environmental dangers and self-destruction. That media outlets over the past 40 years have increasingly relied on worst-case scenarios and cherry-picked facts to support frightening narratives. How fear is used to conduct social engineering to enrich the greedy and further inhuman apocalyptic agendas, and how fear divorces us from seeing the immediate solutions to problems causing the fear. For example, hydroxychloroquine, in use for the military for over 40 years on hundreds of thousands of peoples as a safe cure. The need for herd immunity, which is blocked by social distancing, sheltering, and mask wearing. Vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc supplementation. Remembering commonly known facts about how viruses are spread. UV light and heat destroy them, and that viruses are not easily spread via surface contact, and that the vast majority of humans either have or quickly acquire immunity, thanks to the genius of the human immune system. Fear is a greater and more lethal threat to the immune system than any virus. All that notwithstanding, what is most important about this is how enforced isolation has brought us face to face with what is important in our lives, whether it be alone time, our intimate relationships or lack thereof, what it means to be productive, and how important our individual freedom is to us. This has been a major social deconstruction event and will ultimately lead to a greater sense of gratitude for what we do have and a greater empathy for all living things. There's a deeper meaning for me personally. I've lived most of my life without a lot of material stuff. I've never really wanted much, and the things I did acquire, I got them through favorable circumstances or through the generosity of others. I've been in a religious cult, surviving on $30 a week for years. I've misspent two small fortunes. I've been homeless. I've been on several monkish spiritual retreats. But what I'm coming to realize is that not having much has been way easier for me than acquiring stuff. I'm more likely to give it all away than to hold on to it. Without being mindful of this natural habitual behavior, I've tended to break it all down in favor of building it all up. And that has resulted in a vast array of deficiencies, not only financially, but emotionally, and is certainly reflected in my relationship history. Tearing it all down and clearing the land allows for new creations, new higher ways of being and having, bigger and better ways to be what and who I am. But if I just stop at clearing the land and begin another search for something to tear down, aren't I going against the basic design and urge of the universe to create beyond measure? Yes, destruction is a form of creation, but creation comes before destruction. What is the next level? What possibilities are there that can now come into being on this newly cleared land? How can I create new ways of being, new ways of doing things, and new ways of having? Evolution requires destruction, but evolving itself requires vision and intent. It's easy to get enamored with discovering how and why it all fell down, but once that is done, it's time to take what was learned from the fall and apply it to glorious and inspired visions of what now could be. So the world has fallen down. The pieces are at our feet. Now is the time to step up, create a new vision of greatness, and carry on with the supreme knowing that the universe has our back and the angels are cheering us upward.
You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.